Brancusi is known for his abstract sculptures. Most of them have clean geometrical characteristics that make them elegant, deceptively simple and futuristic. He kept going back to the same subject matter such as animals, seals, cocks, turtles, fishes and birds, human portraits, babies to beautiful ladies, and his favorite, the kiss. At each rendition, they become more reductive in representation. Unlike classical sculptures which are carved right to the detail to create lifelike appearances, Brancusi's sculptures have unnecessary details eliminated, leaving only the essence of the form, in order to capture the essential truth of the subject matter, such as their movement and vitality. For example, for his birds in flight, the act of ascension is captured in the vertical axis and the curved edges that direct the viewer's eyes to the sky. Feathers, claws, eyes? Unnecessary. Through his sculptures, Brancusi challenged the art world to reconsider if sculptures could evoke, rather than resemble, the real world, and pioneered new three-dimensional representations, along with rising modern art movements in the early 20th century. Brancusi aims to portray the essence of the subject to achieve its true ideal form. Years of training in the classical method led him to deep dissatisfaction with the nature of representation, and instead wanted to portray true reality. This desire was influenced by Greek philosopher Plato's theory of form, which asserts that there are two realms, the physical realm that we are currently living in, and the spiritual realm that exists beyond. The physical realm is made up of the material objects we see and interact with daily. It is ever-changing and imperfect. It is merely a mimicry, a shadow, of the spiritual realm, which contains the true forms that are abstract, ideal, unchanging and perfect concepts that transcend time and space. These forms are more real than physical objects. Innocence is eternal, an innocent baby is not. Love is eternal, the love between a couple is not. Brancusi wanted to capture these supreme ideal forms, rather than merely imitating a shadow of those forms. To him, these forms are the true reality. Hence, he ventured into abstraction, cutting the superfluous, distracting and sentimental details, and keeping only what is essential. Brancusi used traditional materials, yet his working methods are different from classical styles. Classical sculpting methods aim to force the material to mimic reality as truthfully as possible. Brancusi on the other hand, believed in allowing the inherent qualities of the material to shine. Through laborious direct carving for marble, stone and wood, and casting and polishing for bronze, he aimed to conserve the truth to materials in the finished piece, to convey the spirituality of the form. Marble expresses the pristine pure quality of an innocent newborn. Polished convex bronze creates horizontal reflections, akin to the swift movement of a fish. His reductive process also allowed him to be the tool that digs out the form within the material, like Michelangelo, bringing its cosmic essence into actual visible existence. Brancusi's works are complemented by customized pedestals. Their form and material contrast the main subject on top of them to highlight, complement and elevate them, reinforcing the sculpture's totality. Unlike classical pedestals which rarely add value to the sculpture, Brancusi's bases play the symbolic role of the physical realm to the ideal form they are supporting. Brancusi's works were created amidst rapid industrialization in the Western world. He could be responding to the increasing industrialization of the built environment, which had led to a strong sense of tragic alienation, and a desire to return to spirituality and nature. Coupled with the strong exposure to primitive art, that were filling up French galleries in the late 19th century, artists like Brancusi saw the kind of existential calmness that these primitive forms exuded, that classical figurative sculptures could not. These sculptures could have shown the way to creating artworks that did not mimic the natural world, but instead express the intangible, that are rooted in the spiritual, and inspired by the materiality of the medium. Just like modern painters who were experimenting with abstract methods that reflect a desire towards spirituality, intuition and emotion, modern sculptors like Brancusi were also doing the same. They created a new visual language that gives a sense of simplicity, serenity, harmony and sensuous enjoyment, qualities that cannot be obtained from the inhuman industrial world of poverty, alienation and war. Brancusi had many influences. One of them is primitive culture, primarily Romanian culture that he grew up with. Romania's strong tradition of carving when creating functional and ceremonial objects had an influence on Brancusi's techniques. Romanian folk myths and archaic symbols also had an influence on his choices of subject matter, such as the Maestra, a mythological bird who grant anyone who hears its songs health and life, the belief in the spiritual relationship between humans and animals, which could explain the various animal subject matter that he created, and Oltenian folk architecture. Another possible cultural influence is African art, which he was exposed to in New York with his friend Marcel Duchamp. Some of Brancusi's figurative works share similar features with African figurative sculptures, such as the simplified facial features, the geometric patterns and the disproportionately long torsos. Finally, he was influenced by Auguste Rodin, father of modern sculpture who conveyed intense human emotions in sculptures, unlike the classical ones. He taught Brancusi to use the expressive inherent quality of the materials to bring them to life, and work patiently as he sculpted. 
Public sculptures are produced for a public space, and they play various roles. They can inspire the community and promote a sense of unified identity, record and celebrate important events in the history of the community, and even generate public discourse. Ultimately, they are made to serve the community, and their commonly monumental scale reinvigorates the public space, revitalizing the people who live within it. Brancusi was commissioned to create public sculptures at Targuju, Romania, to commemorate Romanian soldiers who died in World War I. His three public sculptures were a culmination of all of his oeuvre of works, as seen in the similarity in the choice of material and form. They come together as a celebration of the entire passage of human life, the table of silence, low to the ground, associations to humble beginnings of communality and domesticity, the gate of the kiss, the next step of human life, marriage, sexual fusion, generation, and finally the endless column, a stairway to heaven. While the Targuju ensemble serves as a powerful tribute to celebrate the war heroes, its abstract quality stretches beyond the community, making it a timeless, spiritual universal public sculpture that anyone can appreciate.